Uh, good morning. Welcome to week 11 of our class. Um, it's uh, wonderful to be here and to join all of you. Uh, welcome to all our e-learning students as well. As you've joined in week after week, um, we hope we are we're being encouraged and learning together. Um, did you all finish your class late? Because I see very few students today. Your previous class? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay, okay. I think Thank everyone you. is having a five minute break. Okay. All right. I think uh, till people come in, we'll uh, we'll get started and we'll maybe just do like a quick recap about what we uh, so anybody anybody would like to go what is it that we focused on last week we did one of the counseling skills which one did we do questioning skills ma'am Okay, thank you, Avni. Yes, we did about uh, questioning. We did yes, Chaya. We did productive and um, unproductive questions. We did open-ended. We did closed-ended questions. We looked at different kinds of questions. Uh, we also did a kind of a role play to uh, give us a fair idea about the excessive use of questions and uh, how we may need to channelize it and intersperse it with. Uh, uh, previous skills of responding. Okay, so um, today we're going to try and complete two other skills and wrap up this entire topic of counseling skills. Um, so the first hour we'll be looking at um, uh, personalizing, and the next hour we'll looking we'll be we'll be focusing on influencing and taking action, um, initiating action. Uh, as as a skill okay so we're going to be now uh, focusing on this so run along with me today is probably a packed uh, day because we have a couple of things to cover um just just to keep it um, in the context of what we're learning how we're understanding i've brought about a couple of examples so that um, it it can get a bit more simpler uh, for us to deal with this because th these are you know, bridged courses, we may not be able to spend too much of time on it, but at least you get a fair idea as to how um, it goes on. And for those of you who may be interested to taking it further and really building up these skills on a um, on a deeper level. OK, so I'll just get, just I'm just going to um, share my screen. Uh, just give me a minute. Okay. All right. So um, we had started off with micro skills and uh, we had looked at the initial three skills of attending, responding and questioning. Today, we're going to be looking at personalizing skills. If you look at some, uh, some material that's given, um, yeah, what I'd also like to do is by the end of today's class, I will just add in some reading material for you. Um, this is not from from uh, written by by us, but then it's something that's uh, that that has been picked up from uh, certain counseling textbooks. But there are certain PDFs which I will attach at the end of the class on the stream, so you can take some time to reading it. It's a little bit more in detail from what your notes have, uh, um, so that you know you can just kind of recap it. Uh, from from those notes as well and maybe just consolidate an entire process together so i will be adding in a couple of um, material for you to read through so we looked at uh, attending responding and questioning skills and today what we're going to do on personalizing skills actually falls a lot under responding skills okay so there is there is a large part of it in responding, but I've just broken it down a little bit more so that there isn't a confusion. Uh, often it gets it gets hard sometimes when you're when you're just learning it theoretically to to really pick up the difference between these and how it is done uh, differently. So I've just taken it as a separate thing. So in maybe in in the notes that you may be reading, you may find it coming under uh, responding skills. Okay, so don't get worried. It's all 
it's all there. It's just the way that it is. It becomes categorized often uh, differs from author to author. Okay, so personalizing skills, where where we had spoken about this the last time, when you look at the meaning of the word personalizing, what do you think it means? What does the word to personalize mean? We had spoken about this a bit last time, right? Oh, sorry, I think I, I stopped sharing. I'm sorry. Just a minute, just a minute. Okay, so what do you mean by the word personalizing? What does the word in itself, an English word, mean to personalize? Uh, personalize see, yeah yeah go ahead something in uh, uh, in terms of your own self like uh, personalizing means pertaining to me okay okay personal good to me uh, then okay. uh, it matters to me more than others that's personal oh. okay good good that that's an excellent attempt okay so when you're looking at personalizing it is trying to look at like Avni rightly said, what, how does something appear to me? What is the meaning of a certain situation to me? How, uh, when I say I'm personalizing it, I'm looking at the way that I am personally involved in a certain event or how do I contribute to a certain situation or an event? So that's what, uh, so the focus when you think personalizing, the focus is coming back to you or the focus in, in as in counseling, the focus is coming back to the counselee. That's what the word specifically means to personalize. So let's let's look at it in a little bit more of detail. So when uh, what is the meaning of it? Um, so just, just taking it a step before. OK, the the skill that we learned earlier on responding, when you respond empathetically, what you're doing is your remember, we said that we enter into the frame of reference of the individual, right? You're ent entering into the experience of the other person so that you can help them to explore where they are in their lives. So when you respond to them, you are communicating your understanding of the of the person as well as the problem that they're going through so you're validating their summary and you're responding you're kind you're talking about what um you remember we spoke about re responding to the feeling responding to the meaning responding to the content so we spoke about so that's what you do in the skill above now in pers personalizing what you're doing is you're helping the counselee to become more aware um, of of the fact that they are also they also may be playing a part in the problem they may be playing a part in the situation uh, themselves okay so it emphasizes internalizing those experiences uh, which they are a part of so in other words in other words what we're saying is that we internalize our understanding about our problem and we are growing uh, to know ourselves more in the midst of that problem. How would the counselee be reacting or responding or mediating or uh, improving or decreasing or affecting the problem? So that's what personalizing means. You're actually helping them to become aware of how much they are a part of the problem that they have discussed. So that's what the word personalizing means. Now, let's look at um, the purpose of it. What what would it mean to, um, uh, to, when you're saying personalizing, what is it bringing about? Here, it enables the counselee to understand where they are with respect to where they want to be. For example, they are at uh, place A, okay, the problem that they are in. So what you're doing, the purpose of this is to enable them to understand, to move from 
point A to point B. I'm feeling frustrated about something. I want to feel better about it. There is discord over here. I want to make that OK. This is what I think about this over here. I want to think about this better. So it is helping them to understand where, where they should be going from where they are. So what you're doing is by personalizing, you are creating a conversation with them that facilitates their understanding of where they want to be. So you're helping them look for themselves. Where is it that they are? to where they want to be. So it's a dialogue between where they are in, in their reality to where they would like to be more ideally. Okay, So they are unhappy with where they are right now, but they are hopeful that they can become uh, more real or become a different, uh, a different part of maybe a more ideal situation or an ideal self. So by personalizing this, you are helping them to become, uh, to bring about change. So you are, as a counselor, you become an agent of change. Like, so let me give you an example. So the counselee may report that, you know, uh, things are not going too well at my home because my wife does not understand me. So what happens over here is where the counselee you find that is putting all the blame on the wife for the presence condition okay but it is likely that the the husband in this case may also have a part in the problem situation so the most effective method to improve a situation is for the counselee to acknowledge that she's playing or he's playing um, a part sorry he's playing a part in this problem and to work out a way of lessening or improving it altogether. So we see that growth begins when blaming stops. Okay, Because in, in conditions you, you see, in personalizing, you're dealing with the counselee's contribution to the problem, not with the contribution of the other person. So we're facilitating, uh, here we, we facilitate, what we're doing is personalized understanding when we are helping the counselee in internalizing or owning the meaning of their experiences um, or owning their problems or owning whatever the issues or owning their goals or whatever they want or what, what they need. So that's the purpose of it, is to get them to understand where they are at in the midst of their problem. How much of, of this is something that they can take ownership to? So often when people do come in for counseling, it's a lot more external, right? And this may take a couple of sessions. This doesn't happen at the first time because in the first time you are giving them time to just be able to share what they're experiencing in it. So personalizing happens only when you have grounded and responded well in their situation to help them to focus back on what may be a challenge in their lives. Okay, so that that is what the purpose of uh, personalizing is. So to just quickly summarize, when you focus, when the counselee focuses on uh, others, they are externalizing their experiences. They almost um, bring about the fact that they aren't involved in any way in resolving their problem. It almost, uh, uh, when you don't personalize, it's almost like they don't have any kind of a, um, a say or a contribution in working this out. But by focusing upon themselves, you are helping them internalizing, internalize their experiences. So internalizing is making the counselee accountable for their experience or what their part of the contribution is in 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 their cases. Okay. So um, uh, so let's let's uh, look at when we're looking at personalizing, we're saying it involves, um, first of all, formulating and communicating these individualized responses. So you are, uh, now this, the counselee themselves may not come about to understand, okay? Um, in most cases, I'm not saying in all, but in most cases, they may come to a place of not, of always being external focused. So what it requires for you to do is formulating that for them or communicating what it 
truly would mean to them. And you do that through these four ways, feeling, so you're personalizing a feeling, you're personalizing a meaning, you're personalizing a problem, or you're personalizing a goal, okay? So it, it involves uh, you as a counselor to be able to bring about an understanding and communicating that understanding to them through just a response, okay? And we'll, we'll look at more detail in that for a, for a better example. Okay, so why, so before we personalize, there's something that we need to do. And that's why the skill of personalizing comes within the skill of responding. So if you need to personalize, you should initially respond to feelings. And that's why you should get the feelings in the open. Because if, if the feelings aren't in the op open, it's, it's stuck inside and it become and, and they are not really able to able to um, see for themselves what the situation means for them okay and how they need to deal with their own feelings. So the reason why you should get the feelings out in the open and that's what we've been learning throughout in the responding skills is you are helping them to learn to deal with the emotions that's coming about there they begin to, as they begin to articulate their emotions, they begin to see that they have uh, an agency about their own emotions. The emotions are coming out from, from them. So the more they explore their own feelings, the more they are likely to channel them constructively. Okay, So they may say, I feel so dejected. I feel so upset about this. I want to change the way that I feel. Okay, So there, you've got them in some way to personalize it that you know they're taking the onus and saying this is how i feel and i want to begin to change the way that i feel so they've begun to personalize and say okay you feel this way like you you may you may this is this is how you would personalize a feeling you say you know you feel really dejected but you want to feel a lot more hopeful about your situation so you see and that that comes in only when when the counselor responds and says, "Okay, you feel dejected, but you would like to be more hopeful about the situation, or you feel unhappy, but you really want to begin to feel a lot more constructive about this." So you see, from where they were, you feel hopeless or you feel dejected to a place that they want to be, and. The key point here is, which I will come into later, is where you are bringing the counselee back into the game, okay? And that comes in in your response, and I, and I will bring that up a little later. So what, what are we trying to look at here is, so that, that's exactly why it's important to help to respond to their feelings so that they get it out, okay? They are able to share what, they, what they're feeling so that you can help them, one, to work with it, to deal with it, and also to find ways of how they can move from position A to position B, and you're giving them a chance to think a little bit more with clarity, okay? Now, to go through this entire um, uh, personalizing skills, I'm just going to take an example so that, you know, it helps us to um, to build on, on what we're learning. Others, it just becomes very conceptual, okay? So here's um, Anita, a second PU student. Okay, so for those... Uh, for those of us who are not in India, a second PU student is a 12th grader, all right? So a 12th grader says, things are not going so good for me in school. I just seem to be floundering. I fake it every day, but inside I'm really down because I'm not sure of what to do or where I want to go. So this is the situation that, um, that Anita has come to you with, okay? So what... What do you do in a, in, a, in a situation like this? The first and foremost thing is you, you establish a good base of communication, a good therapeutic relationship. Okay? That's the, all that what we have learned is something that we need to do prior to getting into this place of personalizing. Okay, So before you make those personalized responses, you must establish a good uh, base of communication. And so what would that be? You make multiple responses that bring about the content, the feeling, the meaning. We spoke about all of that in responding skills. We did all of that. And that's what you're doing. Okay. 
when you're when you're building a good base uh, of communication and a relationship you're also helping uh, um, you're also understanding uh, what is going on also you are communicating the accuracy of your understanding to what the counselee has said so so that both of you all are in the same page and that's exactly why you may need to dwell on exploring a little more rather than getting into a place of finding a solution because you you want to get into the frame of reference of the of your counselee so that you're not talking from your head you're not talking from your experience but you've done that enough to understand to explore enough so that it's almost like you have become almost like okay it's not like it is not it is but almost like you're experiencing the same struggle that they're going through okay so it when you're doing that when you're building when you're doing that enough you are helping the counselee to find out what they are willing to understand and what they're willing to tell us so the response part of it that especially the first part the e self exploration is extremely important and that's why you spend time to really understand it greater understand what they're feeling how what is the actual content of the problem what is the meaning that they are given to the problem what are the goals that they have so i hope you are able to recollect what we have done this far and the importance of doing that before you can get into this place of personalizing okay so with anita this this young girl you have done that over and over and over again and now you're coming to a place of actually personalizing her problem so in um, yeah sorry so so in when you're responding what are you doing uh, sorry i'm just going to put that uh, put that case again so this is what she said right so when you are responding to her feelings this is what you are probably saying you're responding to the feeling and the content this is what we've learned you feel discouraged because things aren't going too well for you at school so she says yeah at school this is what happened this is what's going on you know i feel this way um oh you sound really dejected about that because of what uh, you know maybe your 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 teachers have spoken about so you're actually building on that before you can get into a place of personalizing so you're responding to a feeling and content building it well enough so that you have a fair enough idea about what is going on in every realm of her 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 thoughts her feelings her uh, her um, her behavior her her needs all of that seems to have come about through that initial part of just working through that now what are you doing in personalizing in personalizing the counselee's experiences are inter internalized by introducing the counselee into the responses now what does that mean you are helping them internalize it for them so if you look at the formula it says you feel something because you all right so remember the, that that word you have internalized it back to them you feel like this because you feel a strong need to push out of this fakery okay so that's what you you're doing to personalizing whereas look at the responding one you're just responding to the feeling and content you haven't personalized there you're saying it's more the content you say you feel discouraged because things aren't going too well at school it's still external focused you see that it's still external focused but then you are drawing out what they feel about what is external but in personalizing you are in helping to internalize them that by introducing them into that equation so you're saying you feel discouraged because you feel a strong need to push out of this fakery right so it what what you you turn the course and said okay uh, this is where you are at okay and you feel that this is not where you want to be okay or this is this is not where um this is what what uh, you you don't want to happen so you have bought it back to the to the counselee themselves to to bring about a fairer understanding that how much as how much they are involved in in this in in the struggle or in this issue so when you're responding um to meaning you're you're using that externalizing format you feel because that so it's all because of what is happening in school 
But when you internalize, you're introducing the counselee's responses using this format. Okay, you feel dash because you dash. Okay, and and that is that is that example that's uh, that's given over for you. Okay, so um, uh, let's just go back to that example once again. Okay, so here in there is a there is a, another response that is given in personalizing here. The personalizing is towards the content. Okay, so you feel upset because you don't like stumbling like this in school. Okay, so it has gone back to the student. It's gone back to Anita and not about what is happening in her environment. All right, so. So by now, these statements seem very simple, and you may be wondering how would this change it for them. But you know, it's amazing to see that the way that um, that that uh, and and for some people, it they may catch on quickly. But maybe for some, you may really need to keep going on to um, to really work this out. So. For example, let's say uh, uh, Anita didn't catch what you were saying. So you may say something like this. You feel upset because you don't like stumbling like this in school. How do you think um, you probably are contributing to what is going on? Or how do you think that there is a role that you may be playing in with, with whatever is happening? So there it gets the person to think. Okay, may say that... Um, and I, I, I just don't work hard or I, I don't do this. I feel under motivated. So it comes back to them. You're helping them bring that connection back to where they are at. OK, uh, so we'll, we'll move on to, to looking at the next one. So so we said when you're personalizing, you're 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 personalizing different things. What you're doing here is you're you need to also personalize the meaning of the situation. For example, you're looking at what are the effects of the situation on the counseling. What is the implication that is going on because of what is happening? So in this, you're trying to help the, uh, the counselee answer these questions. OK, what is the effect of the situation upon them? OK, that is it's a personal consequence of their experience. Now, because this is happening, what is the consequence that you're going through? Often they cannot or, uh, you know, you may not really completely articulate information about these implications themselves. They will they will not tell you, you know, because of this, I'm going through this, I'm going through this, this, my future is, they may not say that. For them, it's all so external focused that they haven't got a chance to really think about its implications. Or you're also looking at the personal beliefs that causing that's causing them to feel the way about the situation. What are the assumptions that they are making that they seem to be stuck in that situation okay so um now, now now this is moving a little bit extra so we're saying she may be going through a lot of assumptions that um you know that that the that uh, probably that she's not good enough or that uh, she's unable to get get what uh, she's looking for or the college is uh, is a bad college so there are certain assumptions that that she may be operating from so one implications that's what are the effects of this on her and what are the assumptions that's making her stay in that situation and it's only when we bringing about this personalizing the meaning do these things become more um uh, more uh, evident okay so personalizing meaning will involve identifying those common themes that they may be thinking about or finding out what are the implications or the effects of the situation upon the counselee or identifying what are those personal beliefs that's causing the counselee to feel this way about the situation so that's what we are attempting to um, work on so so here the, the the formula still remains the same you feel dash because you remember that is something that you're bringing in for example we say uh, you feel devastated because uh, you know you, you're may, maybe in, in another you you feel devastated because you feel um, you're dependent uh, upon upon maybe you know if she's bought bought about some other information dependent upon some people there so you're you're attempting to personalize what she may be going through so what you're doing is you're looking for common themes 
in the expressions of the counselee. And these themes often relate to what the counselee is saying, either about themselves or if they're saying about others or uh, of the situation in, in itself. So the common themes are those themes that are generally uh, intermingled uh, in one in in the expressions of of the um, of the of the counselee. So if we were to look at the at the um, uh, at the example again, so you look at the meaning that is brought about here. You feel upset because your future will be affected if you don't do well in college this year. So it's become a meaning. Now, if I do all of this, your future gets affected if you don't do well. Now, you're bringing about that so that they take agency, they take responsibility, they take onus for what is going on. So here, when you, when as a counselor, when you're helping in that personalizing, you're bringing them back to that, the meaning of this entire problem for them. Okay, and you're making them more aware that, hey, yes, my future probably gets, uh, gets affected. And here it's a, it's an assumption that she's probably made, not an assumption, it's an implication that she's made, the effect of what the situation will be for her. Okay, now, uh, as you keep moving forward, let's look at how do you personalize a problem. Now, in personalizing a problem, you're looking at what is there about the counselee themselves that is contributing to the problem. So you're looking into, um, into a deeper way as to how the problem is uh, affecting the, uh, no how they are part of that problem so when you personalize a problem you're helping them to understand what is it that they are unable to do that has led them to the present experience of uh, that they are going through okay so what is there about the counselee that is contributing to them so what is probably there in their personality or in their, um, you know, in the way that they're doing things. So you're helping them to focus on that. So by this, what you're doing is you're helping them to take responsibility for things that they can control, for things that they can look to themselves as maybe as a source of their problem. So it involves maybe looking at uh, deficits that they may be having, or it, it looks at maybe specifying certain skills that they don't have. So that's what you would do when you're actually personalizing the problem. You're getting the counselee to look at themselves for uh, for something that doesn't seem to be changing. Now let's look at Anita's case. Now Anita has brought about another extra information. And if you look at here, she's saying, I'm the school basketball team, basketball team's captain, and I spend two hours every evening in practice. I'm left with no time or energy to study, okay? So if you see, how are you personalizing the problem here? You're saying you feel upset or you feel, um, you know, worried or frustrated because you cannot spend enough time studying, all right? So here, there is something that she is contributing to. So you're bringing about the problem that you're making the problem her own, saying, okay, you're, you're facing a rough time in college. You're also having um, a basketball practice, which gives you not enough time to study. So you've, you're kind of helping them, helping her see where is the problem lying. Okay. So do you see that because you have you have responded well enough, she has given you certain additional information that probably gives you a lot more clarity about what is going on in her life okay uh, she let's say she adds in another sentence okay uh, at the end she says i should never have agreed to being the captain she says i should have never agreed to being the captain so uh, how do you personalize in this one so you can probably there's a new feeling that's coming here so you're saying you feel angry because you have taken on more than you can handle or you've taken on much more than you can chew okay so it it gives an understanding to her that my problem is existing because of the fact that i have taken on very many things and i'm not able to prioritize my time or not able to 
uh, uh, focus on something else because my attention is on something. So it, when you're doing this, it really brings about a lot more clarity about where and what is it that requires that specific change. So that's that's how you focus back on personalizing a problem. OK, now moving to the next one. How do you personalize a goal? Personalizing a goal is it involves uh, you're trying to establish, like we said, where the client was and where they would like to be. So where the, where the, where the counselee uh, wants to be in relation to where they are. So they're in point A to point B. So here, the counselee, uh, when, you, when they reach here, they are demonstrating their readiness to move from discussing their problems to discussing their goals. So when you've come to a place of, you know, personalizing meaning, personalizing feeling, personalizing problem, they've come to a place to say, hey, OK, now I would like to move from here here to there. OK, so they so even as uh, when the counselee um, begins to see this, they are ready to respond to their problems the way we have been attempting to do it for them. OK, so what you're what you're attempting to get them is and defocus from the external into the internal by by doing all of personalizing meaning feeling and then coming to a goal and say okay now you feel you cannot handle this so what is the next step so the basic way to personalize goal is to determine the behaviors that are opposite of the problem okay so it's very simple in in the sense of they want to, so she's come up to saying that I can't handle so many things. Okay, I so the pro, the 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 thing that she wants to do is I I want to learn how to handle all of this. Okay, so the the way to personalize those goals is to determine what are those behaviors or action points that are opposite of of the personalize of the problem that she's she's getting into. Okay, so what do you do here? Is first of all establish where they want to be where is it that they want to go okay so maybe it it starts off it probably gets in with a question okay you've you've shared with me that uh, school's been difficult you've also shared with me that you are a basketball captain and that you've taken on a lot of things and you really would like to change all of this or you would really need or learn want to learn how to handle this okay anita let me uh, let me ask you a question. Where is it that you would like to be at this point of time? If all of this sorted out for you, where is it that you would like to be? So you're asking a, a, a question to help to understand what does she have in her mind in the way that she would like to discuss it. Uh, I, I will take up questions in a few minutes once I'm done with this. Okay, So, so I, I don't finish, uh, stop the flow and then I, I'll handle those questions. So what, you, what you're getting to do is asking her where is it that you would like to be. Okay. Now, she may say, OK, I want to learn how to handle all of this together. And when you're personalizing goals, you're also helping her uh, to look at what is contributing to resolving that problem. What is there in you that you're not able to resolve that specific problem? OK, so this is the formula that you use. You feel dash because you cannot dash and you want to dash. So if you see, because you cannot uh, handle your time and you want to learn how to manage all of this together so you feel um, uh, frustrated because you cannot handle multiple things together and you really want to get a hold of all of this in school so you have personalized a goal you have bought about the fact that there is a problem okay that she sees she's taken the responsibility of that problem and she wants to work that out okay um all right so so you have an additional thing over here that she says anita says my dream is to become a doctor and i've taken the science stream i did poorly in my first term exams i'm disappointed in myself for not studying enough okay so what are you personalizing here you're personalizing the goals so if you look at the example you feel dejected because you cannot put in the hours required and you want to be able to do well in your exams all right so there's a problem here, according to this, this statement that she's made. 
you cannot put in the hours required and you really want to do well in your exams okay so so here again you've got them to own up and say okay you really want to do well in your exams and maybe your next question would would be uh, maybe it's do you think it would be a good idea to really brainstorm to see um, what is it that you can do to put in your hours of study or what is it that you can do to help yourself well in your exams okay so you've got her back in her own action and not about the school and the college and all of that that's that's uh, going as as peripheral for her okay uh, now now even as you're doing that what are you doing you're also continuously doing a feeling check with respect to her goals okay so anita may say yeah i i really want to do well in my exam so there again now you're bringing back a hopeful feeling so that there is a sense of um uh you know a sense of hope yeah a sense of uh, knowing that's that this is not as bad as she initially expressed it to be that she once she's personalized the problem she would be able to find ways in dealing with her issues so you feel hopeful because you're going to figure out how you can do well in your exams right so maybe that that question of uh, you know what would you like to do to to change the way that you study your study in your exam so she may say yeah maybe i should for this semester give up my basketball i should really focus on this probably take a break in that or maybe i should time manage so she's giving you these kind of thoughts and then at the end of it you are doing a feeling check you say oh you you seem to be really hopeful even as you're thinking about ways in which you can you are you're working out to do these exams so that that helps them to come to a place of working through you know moving into the next phase of uh, of being able to take on action so if you look if you looked at the entire um uh, process of it if you go on to looking at the entire process of it you will find that you're moving them from an external experience into an internal experience and trying to help them formulate for themselves what are what do they feel about it personally and where would they like to be what do they what are the implications or the or the consequences that they feel will happen what are the certain assumptions that they are going through and lastly what is the goal that so you move them to that place in actually working this out to help themselves okay all right um, I think I'll take questions right now. Uh, uh, Nisha, I think you had a question. Nisha, do you have a question? Okay, sorry. All right, all right. Okay, is uh, would anyone have any doubts, any questions here? Because this is one chunk of it, and um, any any kind of uh, any questions, any thoughts about this? Um, sure, Pastor. Uh, you're on mute, but yeah, um, I'll uh, ask my question. Go ahead, uh, Samuel. I'm not on mute. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, Pastor, uh, so I'm thinking, so, so the, the goal, uh, so I'm just checking my understanding also I'm, while I'm trying to frame my question. So the goal of personalizing is, um, you know, so this, this generally, so it happens after a while, like after you've built a rapport with the uh, Counseling, you've gained trust, uh, you've responded, um, you've kind of had a good understanding of the problem and you've established some goals. And then now we are kind of trying to bring in the personalization. And uh, it's uh, what I understand is it's um, for us to help the counselee, uh, you know, have a change in perception or, or even shift in perception to see like, okay, how am I playing a part in this problem and what can I do? So, so if, if that's the goal. Uh, but the point that I'm contemplating is uh, you know, a lot of times I think people do come in blaming themselves already a lot. You know, like mm. uh, maybe I'm, I'm so I, I don't know, but it's like, you know, 
I don't think I'm cut out for engineering or you know the uh, I'm I'm not someone who can work remotely uh, I I I lack discipline or uh, I lack motivation I'm not motivated enough so 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 people are already you know they're coming in with the with a personalized view of themselves like I should be working I should not be procrastinating I should be working hard enough but I just I just can't. So um, you know. So is is it always uh, the counselee oh, yeah. who has something con- like like for let's say in Anita's case, um, you know, what if she would have enjoyed more taking up humanities or or not being like maybe you know she's just good in sports and you know just probably out of parents or peer pressure she ended up being the captain. Whereas she would have enjoyed more in arts and theater, but she just couldn't like she couldn't make either the distinction or she just gave into family peer pressure, and uh, she stuck with it. And, and uh, so, uh, I think the point that I'm trying to make is um, so if if a counselor like so the the personal like your if the goal of personalizing is to make the counselor see his or her own part in the problem. Um, but to what end? Uh, you know, like if, especially if the counselee is coming already with uh, a personalized view saying, you know, like I, I would have enjoyed myself more than humanity. Like, let's say just this case, like I would have enjoyed more, uh, probably I'm taking my own case back in college. I, I still feel like I would have, I was more of a humanity student but uh, because of peer pressure bandwagon and all that stuff i just took up science and then i just i didn't enjoy it and i just like ended up floundering in college but i knew i was in the wrong stream but i didn't have like i it, it I, I just didn't like um like it 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 was it was too much for me to change streams midway i just felt like i could just go through it um, but eventually just yeah you know it's, it, it, like when i still look back it's uh, like i could have done much better in college if i had taken a different stream mm. Mm. okay so what okay so i think samuel what you're saying is many a times uh, counselees may come in with already knowing uh, that uh, uh, okay you think they've personalized the problem i don't think they i don't think that's personalizing the problem there they have come in thinking about that they have been a cause towards their own problem. They've been the source of their problem, right? And uh, so what you're doing as a counselor there is to help them take accountability and responsibility for the fact that even, even if they have been the source of their own problem, they can also be the solution to their problem. So you're bringing them to a place where you're helping them seem like for Anita, maybe there are certain implications of wrong choices, that certain consequences that uh, has come by, okay? Or there are certain assumptions she's making about herself with regard to the course or uh, another possibility that you said is it's absolutely it's it's a wrong choice and so it wasn't a well thought of decision so what you're doing over here is getting them to come to a place where they can take onus for the wrong decision and look at ways of how they can work something out for themselves if they have another goal. So she may say something like, okay, I, I joined the stream. I'm really unhappy at the stream. So maybe there is a, requires a little exploration to find out, okay, you seem extremely unhappy of this. If you had a chance to do something else, what, what, what do you think that would be? Now, this is why exploration is very, very important because only if you're able to gather this kind of a data is are you able to move forward in helping personalize and i think it this also relates to a question that beth asked what about um, you know if there's no change in if you cannot change a situation like for example she says uh, anita says you know i chose the stream because i like it i i really want 
somehow I just don't feel motivated to it. So there's a situation she doesn't want to change, but it could be just a, uh, I think uh, I think that was the one. Of, uh, yeah, she said, what if it's only an attitude? Right. So you will understand that only, number one, if you've explored enough. Secondly, when you're able to personalize this and help them see that, you know, is this an assumption? Okay, you feel this way because... Um, uh, you know, you have a certain belief about it. Maybe there's a certain belief about about uh, it, it. It takes a lot of hard work to, to get into the stream. And that's maybe something that I wasn't prepared for. Maybe that's the assumption that she's come come with. OK, so you may say, OK, you feel um, uh, you feel this is a really hard thing because you feel hard work is something that that you didn't expect to, this hard work is not something that you expected to do. There you've personalized the problem. Now to personalize the goal, okay, is, is maybe she says, you know, I want to do it. I really want to do it. So probably it is going back to, to helping her see that it's something that she needs to work out of. Or it's something that, you know, she, she requires to change a, a meaning about it and saying, okay, this is what I thought about it. But now, since I have a, a, a reviewed meaning of it, a renewed meaning of it, maybe there are certain action points that I may need to do. So when they come in, like the case that you said, Samuel, they think they're the source of the problem. They don't feel that they are the solution to their problem themselves and that's what you're doing in counseling is you're helping them look back at what can you do to change the situation that you're in it it may be behaviorally it may be through your emotions it may be just having a better meaning of it it may be just uh, having a better attitude to it it may be just bringing down your expectations of it so any of this that's what the counselee needs to do. So that's why you bring them back to a place of personalizing it. Then remember, you're not um, in personalizing. You're not making them feel that you know. You're not creating guilt because they've been the source of the problem. In fact, what you're attempting to do through that is giving them the hope that there are resources inside of you that you can that can bring about a change. And that's what you are bringing them to. So when you when you personalize this for them and give them the hope that you know, hey, this is the goal. Uh, you know, you you would really like to do like to get forward into into medicine, but you just feel hard work is um, difficult for you. But you want to look at ways that you can work on the struggle. So you've brought them back to that understanding of what is their agency in working through that. I hope I un, un I I yes. Understand. Answer your uh, question. Absolutely, Pastor. Absolutely, I mean, a very important distinction. Uh, it's so much clearer now. Okay. All right. Uh, just a minute. I'm just going to look at Beth's question. The second question: Would you say there is always some point where we can take responsibility for a situation and take action? Uh, did you mean? Oh, okay. Yeah, the counselee. Yes, in every situation, uh, it's the counselee that needs to take action, even if. The problem is on the other side. Let's say there is physical abuse, okay? Uh, in, in, a, in a home, there is physical abuse. And the wife comes to you and says, this is what my husband's doing. What you're doing is you're helping them to take on and see how they are contributing into the problem by not doing anything, okay? So that's what you bring them back to personalizing the situation then for them so that they move up forward to figuring out a way on how to address that problem, right? So... Yes, you. Uh, in every situation, it is bringing them to a point to take responsibility, even if they are not the cause of the problem or the source is not from them and it's completely external, you're still going to help them to figure out how is it that they can take agency and how is it that they can take on uh, a, a role in, in moving from a place of, you know, I don't want him to hit me to a place of I want to be safe. So what can you do about it? You know, what is it? I mean, that's what you're moving them to so that they take the responsibility and say, OK, maybe I should get somebody's help or maybe I should take legal help or maybe I should be more firm or I should go discuss this with my parents. That happens only when you're able to uh, get them to personalize it and own that problem for themselves. OK, I hope that was clear. Okay. All right. We're at uh, 10.55. Let's have a 10-minute break and come back at 11.05 on my clock. Meet you soon.